Yeah. Uh, so how you got involved with INA? And Sir, I said that uh, my newspaper And you have given your earrings and gold ring to. You have given your earrings and gold rings. My to diamond earrings and jewelry. And the father of Nedaji asked for. He asked because he wanted to drive the British out of India. So he asked for contributions, you see. So I went to him straight away, took out my diamond earring and chain and gave it to him. So, That's how my parents knew that I have given away my life. So when you joined INA, that time from your family, nobody like, uh, every, where, whether they, everybody supported you or they just they, tried They didn't know. They didn't know about it. They didn't know about it. They saw in the papers. <laughs> they didn't know. They thought that it was a street called Ampang Street in KL. Yeah. There, there were big posters about me, published to see. Okay. And I'm standing there, and the photos are there. They're saying that, and people came and congratulated my father. My father, to tell him, you must be very proud of your daughter. She is, at this age, she wants to join the army and fight for against the British, and drive the British out of India. So, what was your family's reaction when they came to know, came to know about this? How they have reacted? My father was in that is my mother. Okay. My mother was crying. She said to me, "You won't come back. If you come back, you'll be no hands, no legs. Who will marry you?" I said, "I don't know that to get married or anything. I just want. To. I don't like the picture. I just want to fight against them." So, when you have joined in INA, what was your initial role there? Uh, like, what sort of duty has given to you and... Uh, well, I was, uh, six months training I had in Singapore. Yeah. All weapons training. How to shoot and how to use the Tommy gun and how to use the rifle. And every day, we go on good marches in Grasmus and in Singapore. So, uh, and people from the... Flats there have been fun hours, you see. So I used to tell them, you won't come and join us, but don't make fun hours. And by that, you know, so many girls came and joined the time of 
how it's pertinent. So you were the second in command in Rani Jhansi Bhai Nira? No, I was, but Colonel Lefty was a doctor, she went away to him. And uh, Colonel Lefty was the doctor, she went away to him. Mm. And Colonel Lefty was the commander of the regiment, you see, because I took extra training in weapons and all. But Colonel Lefty was a doctor, she went away to him. Okay. And she is a very good doctor. Yeah. So after he went away, you are the commandant for him? So that time, like how the like uh, in other people view non-Indians, like the Malay and the Chinese who were staying here. No, here. no, no. I am asking that in their uh, in front of their view, how the image of Indians and especially Indian women got changed after the forming of INA, and uh, how uh, whether the respect for Indian has in, has been increased among them. Or like how it was, like what was the impact? Some, crowd, some people, you see, once a meeting takes place, but there was a big crowds of people. So there were, see, so many crowds. So I used to shout, in Kerala, in Dhamma, in Kerala, you know. Mother, mother, I can say, like that I used to shout, you see. So uh, how, what was the impact of uh, INA and uh, Netaji on non-Indian people here? Was there any impact on them? Like, they have got, like, we know, like, the Burma, Burmese leader, uh, uh, I forgot the name now, he has got, uh, in, uh, like, in, he has got impacted a lot by Netaji and he, is, uh, he was uh, a follower of Netaji for a very long time. So, the common people here, the Chinese and the Malay, whether they have also got uh, impacted with Netaji's ideology and INA. And they, they just come and watch the crowd and then when they are clapping and they also clap. Okay. It's a crowd, you see. But nobody joined in the INA from among other people other than Indians. Except the Indian community. So, how, how was your life evolved after 1945? How you have done like uh, as I know, you have worked in uh, Indian Embassy in London, UK, in the High Commissioner office there, and... I used to go to the Estates. Okay. Palmyra Estates and all that, and we were people. As soon as I came back from school, I was relieved my troops of the house. Straight away, I used to go to the... To the you know, there was a centre called no after like uh, when the ina has got disbanded after 1945 when japan has been like lost to allied force and like INA has disbanded. So then how like you have uh, spent your life after that? So I joined now the welfare association. Okay. Because I used to go to the villages uh, help with the people. So I carry on very far away. My mother used to school in the village. Only she joined the army and now you want to go for all so, like how the ideology of uh, Netaji has impacted you in that work, in the social welfare work, how the ideology of Netaji has impacted you?
So you have uh, went to Burma also at the time of fight. So, uh, like, do you think that in today's world, especially in India or in Southeast Asia, the ideology that Netaji used to carry of with him, that is of socialism, uh, it is still valid or it is still relevant in today's generation also? Do you think? This generation, I'm not so interested. No, that ideology is relevant, do you think? That ideology is relevant this day also? That we should follow the path of patriotism towards the country, mother country or something? Not many people are. The army people, no? Over the British Indian army, they are patriotism. They all through the and they said, fight the British. We don't want to stay in this country. So, it is very surprising to us that you have fought for India's independence and then you people did not went back to India. Uh, what is the reason behind that? Because, yeah, it's a comfortable area. Food is plenty. India has very scarcity of food. They have, but not so much. No, like, is it not due to the, like, country has divided based on the religion that has hurt you or, like, something else reason or, like, like, I will give you an, like, Mrs. Rasama Pusa Bhupalan, he told, she told me that she has not went back since the country has got divided based on religionism and she was, like, very much hurt. So that's why she decided not to go back to India. No, so was it the same reason with you also or it was... No, I didn't want to go to India because I said my parents would. My parents. Okay, okay, okay. They were, they were staying here. In this very house. Do you think that the, after the independence, after 1947, uh, the Indian historian and Indian government they have given uh, like proper justification to INA history and... I don't think so. And they, don't, they don't want to recognize. They never recognize. You have got the Padma Sri Award at uh, which year? Yeah. At which year? In, in which year? 1940? No, no. So before that... So before that there was no recognition. Before that there was no recognition for you. There, there was a, what do you mean? I don't understand. No, no, actually uh, how the Indian government has recognized for the Indian people like you. That's what I said when well, as soon as I, I joined the army, they recognized me. Because they sent me the ticket. Yeah, that is uh, before independence, like at the time of INA movement. But when India got their independence, and uh, like India was an independent country, uh, so that time was there any activity to recognize you people who have fought for INA? No activity. So, uh, like, do you think that Indian government or Indian historian? should work more on this issue and they should uh, rewrite the complete history of INA. Yeah, they must write because INA is, they don't write the history of the And but They are lacking. And do you agree with us that uh, Netaji, should, uh, be Netaji should be declared as our first president of India? Do you agree with this? Yeah, I do. And uh, do you agree with the proposal of uh, declassification that we are asking uh, to Indian government that Indian government should declassify all the 33 files that they are having with them from last 60 years that should be declassified and that should be available to the people of India so that they can know the history. So do you agree with that?
that's it from my side. I 